don't think so much. You might overlook the obvious. You might see past all that you've achieved. Don't move so quickly. You might overstep the moment. You might miss all the beauty you're creating. One can wake up, get dressed, walk out the door thinking that they're on their way to a someday achievable, brilliant finale and simultaneously fail to understand the miracle of the now. It's in what you're doing now, who you're helping now, what you're becoming now, your miracle is now. And you can't see your impact because it materializes behind you as your back is to it and you step toward those distant horizons. There's a direct link between always wanting to be better and never feeling like you're good enough. If you don't properly compartmentalize the two, you'll always be chasing something you can't obtain while you walk right by the brilliance you're piecing together in real time. That carrot just outside of reach for the runner on the treadmill. And I'm not saying your goals and aspirations aren't incredible. I'm not saying uh, you aren't one in a million. I'm not saying you won't shock, change, add unparalleled value to the world. No, that's most certainly possible. But I'm saying you're doing that now too. Like right now. You're not on a trajectory to someday be one in a million. You are one in a million on a trajectory to live life fully, to further expand, explore, as you should. But let's not lose perspective along the way. It's hard to watch someone who has changed your life feel like they're not good enough. It just is. It's hard to watch something so beautiful feel like they must first evolve before they're worthy. And it's like, sure, I get it. We celebrate visible, tangible successes, the innovators and CEOs, world-class talents, people who have built the present and will build the future. But notice there are no ceremonies for the ones who lift others up every day who lead by example, who show up again and again when they're going through their own private hell. There are no record books for them. But I'll tell you what, if there were, you'd be there. And if I could remind you of that every day, I would. The small things you do do not feel so small to those around you. In fact, your mere existence changed my life, and I know I'm not alone, not even close to alone. It's a tough world we live in. Tough enough to bring even the strongest amongst us to our knees. Yet you think you're flawed and insufficient. I ask, compared to what? A lot of people would have folded a long time ago wouldn't be fighting for a dream or standing for anything. A lot of people wouldn't be giving so much of themselves. Again, I continuously run into this question. Why is it that the ones who are changing the world, not with their social media follower count, but with their actions, so often fail to see their own value? Perhaps they're using the wrong measuring sticks. Maybe their sights are set so high they don't realize all that they're making better along the way. Maybe they don't know that every soul they light up puts in motion a ripple effect, an exponential value add. 
But if you just lift your head up and look around, you would see quite the ripple effect. You would see quite the chain reaction. You would see that you are not just working towards change, you are actively embodying it. Don't be the only one who can't see that. Why do I say this? Why spend the time? Well, because one, I think it's not something we say enough. The ones who truly change us or make our lives better need to be told that. There's just something tragic about keeping it to ourselves. And two, because you don't give yourself enough credit. You're blind to the path you've traveled and the dragons you've slayed. I couldn't believe my ears when you apologize for being weak. Weak? Weak is retreating. Weak is being selfish. Weak is forfeiting your gifts. Those descriptors are antithetical to who you are. And sure, we all slip into them once in a while. We're human beings. We all endure our valleys of despair. But to fight with everything you have on your way back up, that is not weakness. That's courage. I think our definitions might be crossed here. See, I'm a firm believer that absolutely we have to be our own greatest critics, no doubt. But the value in that, the expectation, is that it's coupled with a commitment to also be our own greatest ally. Are you? Are you your own greatest ally? Because sometimes I'm not so sure. Do you see how much light you bring to the world? How much better people around you are when you enter a room and smile, when you listen to them in their problem, when you inspire them by making decisions with so much at stake? when you don't let the hardship of your past keep you down. And I know how hard it's been. I'm telling you this because maybe you don't know. Maybe you talk so much about what the future will be and how big and incredible things will become that you overlook the parallel world you are creating with each step along the way, a pilgrim, a wanderer, in search of an impact you are already making. So look, keep your head up and your expectations high. You will do remarkable things. But don't be afraid to look over your shoulder and see that you already are. Don't beat yourself up for not yet arriving at an imaginary place while you change the world along the way. Give yourself the same grace and compassion you would give to me. Allow that for yourself. Don't think so much that you overlook the obvious. You just might see past all that you've achieved. And don't move so quickly that you overstep the moment. You might just miss all that beauty that you're creating. This isn't a pep talk. This is me holding up a mirror so that you can see the value add. You're not merely an IOU to some future self. You are all the people around you whose lives you make better every day, the lives you touch by being you. There's a quote that states, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. 
which means that your reaction is drastically more important than the circumstance. And that's critical to know. It's critical to understand that nothing, no one in life has more power over your own situation than you. And there's an old story that, that hits on this point exactly. There's a father and a daughter. And basically the daughter's complaining. She's complaining about life, how difficult things are. She doesn't know how she's going to make it uh, in whatever it is she's doing. I mean, the, the bottom line is she's tired of the day-to-day, -day, right? And her father gets this idea. He says, come with me into the kitchen. And he gets three pots of water, puts them on the stove, and turns the burners on. As soon as they start boiling, he drops a potato in the first one, an egg in the second one, and some coffee beans in the third one. And after some time goes by and they boil a little bit, he pulls them out, right? he puts the, the potato in a bowl, he puts the egg in a bowl, and uh, he takes a ladle and he puts some of the coffee in, in a cup. And he says, what do you see? She says, well, I see a potato, I see eggs, and I see uh, coffee. He says, yeah, but look closer, there's more there. And she goes and she touches the potato and it's now soft. And he hands her the bowl with the boiled egg. And she takes the shell off and, and breaks it open. She sees that it's hard inside. Then finally, he asks her to take a sip of the coffee. And, you know, she smells it. She takes a sip. And a smile comes to her face. She says, so what does all this mean? What are you trying to, to say? And he says, well, the potato, when I dropped it in the water, it was, it was rigid. It was tough. It was uncompromising. But in the boiling water, it became soft, weak. Then you have the egg that was basically the opposite. This delicate layer protecting a, a liquid center and the, the boiling water made it hard. And then there was the coffee. That wasn't just changed by the situation. It created something new. It took the same adversity and used it as a lever to bring something beautiful into existence. He then looks at his daughter and says, look, when things become challenging, when things become difficult, which one are you? What's your approach? See, maybe the question is not about how challenging the situation is, right? Maybe we've been asking the wrong question. Maybe it's how do you transform yourself and by default, the world around you? How do you take your strengths, your values, your loves, your joys, your happiness, and let that lead you into something bigger? When life gets hard, and it does, what do you become? I always remind myself, you know, we are not defined by life at peak state as much as I wish that were the case, right? We're not shaped by the easy days or the times that we floated by. Because those times are great, they're enjoyable, but they're not what make or break us. It's the times that challenge us and ask us to be what we have not yet become. That's the good stuff. And this is another one of those, you know, simple, but not easy type things because on paper it makes sense, it's understood. But it's an outlook that manifests over time. It's slowly stacked piece by piece and brick by brick, realizing that every situation provides you with tools to make something out of an apparent nothing. And then it waits because fate is in your hands. And, and I can certainly think of, you know, times in my life, that's one of the reasons I love these stories, I can reflect, where each one of those pots of boiling water was relevant. Right? I can think of times I was too headstrong, like the metaphorical potato, I thought success would be easy. I thought projects would be simple to execute. I spent months doing things that just weren't good because I didn't ask what does the world need? I ask myself, what do I want to give the world? And there has to be a marriage there, right? And it was a quick reminder that the world owes me nothing. I was humbled or softened, as the story goes. 
I've been the egg. I've been timid. I've been uncertain, thin-skinned, worrying about what people would say or, or the content I was creating, worried about perception. How would things look if, if, if I failed? And very quickly, I learned that when life is a game of comparison or one-upmanship, when you do things for reasons and people other than yourself, can't win. You overcompensate. You do things for the wrong reasons and you lose yourself. You become hardened. And then there's the good stuff, right? Getting to the coffee, not bowing down to the circumstances, but shaping them. Not letting life dictate how the story goes or the fate of your character. And what's interesting is I'm pretty sure that being that metaphorical egg and the potato, they lay the foundation to become the coffee, the life lessons, the falling down, the picking my ego up off the floor, learning to trust myself, not be led by the opinions and expectations of others. You essentially learn that you can take the world around you and change it, that it is malleable, it is flexible. You have that power, you have that ability, it's up to you to believe it. And that's critical because no one comes along and co-signs that understanding for you, it's an internal process. You start to learn that things aren't there to provide instruction, they're there to propel you. But can you see the unknown as the opportunity, the obstacle as the way, and the loss as the armor that you pick up during the journey? And so, you know, all of these words essentially come to one point. And that point is you have so much more control over your life than you think you do. As I've said before, you are stronger than you think you are. You are more resilient than you can even imagine. And when life tests you, and again, it will, remember that the challenges are not happening to you, but for you. The world isn't taking away what you have, it's giving you what you need. So long as you're willing to adapt with it, to grow, expand out, because you not only have the ability to change yourself, but the world as well.